Doctor! That's me, because I'm committing crimes with both direction and magnitude! Oh yeah! Good night. That's fine. I'm not about to keep barking at a bitch who ain't about to do that. <laughs> anyway, just mad because you was a stripper that thought you was going to get wiped and didn't, psych. That's fine. I'll be a stripper because I make way more money than you, bitch. It's 9, 10. Guys, can anybody drop me class? I'm fucking late for my meeting. I'm supposed to be there 10 minutes ago. Did anybody do their chores today? Fuck, I'm just gonna do it. Can you just get up right there? Oh, guys, it's 8. Gotta go, Jake's calling. Oh, Jake's calling. Oh my god, I look horrid. Oh, Murphy, you look so cute. Get, get out of here. You seriously gotta get out of here. You're fucking gonna shit out. These portions of the video, I don't believe have any audio, but this is Kaylee with her dog. This is the shared dog. And some of the updates that are going to be coming from this, uh, Video is pretty interesting, so definitely stay tuned. Hit like, subscribe, turn on the bell notifications. What's up, a ticket mail? Welcome back. And we got this update if you haven't heard about this yet with regards to Kaylee and Maddie that were at the corner club and the guy at the food truck that's seen talking to the white hoodie guy. Apparently, he spoke with the Daily Mail and he said that he was actually at the club when Kaylee and Maddie were there and he goes to describe what he saw with the two girls. And so the portion of the article starts off with the house is close to the university of Idaho campus. When it was last up for rent, it was described as one of the top campus housing options available sought after location within close walking slash biking, driving distance to campus and Greek row. The agent added ideal setup for roommates with two beds, one bath on each level. The ad also said, sorry, no pets allowed. New details now emerged about Gonclavis and Mogan's last night out from Joe Vidot, a local man who saw the two co-eds out on the town and in the hours before the attack. I believe this is probably the guy with the beard. Police had previously said that the women were partying at the corner club bar the night before the attack. VDOT was also there and said that the women were catching the attention of many of the men at the bar. A lot of the guys were talking to them at the corner club, he told the Daily Mail, adding that Gunclavis, Kaylee, was visibly drunk. The taller girl with the pink on, she was glass eyed. I audibly said, ew out loud she was stumbling through he said he left the corner club ahead of the girls and was with a neighbor who had just moved to moscow showing her the grub bus a food truck popular with students with the late night munchies i was just there waiting because the grub bus takes forever when a bunch of drunk zombies showed up there he said noting that he was a hundred percent sober that's when the woman showed up with a guy in a hoodie who had been the subject of much speculation among internet sleuths as a suspect. Police have not named the man, but said that he is not considered a suspect. I saw the hoodie guy show up with the two of them. The vibe I got from him is that he's super nice. He was trying to help them get home safe, VDOT said. So the girls were drunk, which you could probably tell from the um, grub truck video that they were at least inebriated. And this guy was actually at the club. And I had some clips somewhere where the owner of the club said that he did see the girls himself, but wasn't going to comment on what he saw. And maybe the focus should be, or part of the focus should be at this club. Who else was there? Video footage surveillance. I'm sure police are probably on it, but it's interesting to hear that feedback. Vida defended the man as a dutiful chaperone who may have had amorous intentions on his mind. He was funny. He was nice. He was there to make sure they got home safe because they were super drunk. I thought he was a solid guy. Believe me when I tell you that his vibe was not bad. While they were waiting, a bunch of fraternity guys showed up. 
I was making fun of one of the guys who showed up at the grub bus in short shorts and a tank top, and it was cold, Binat said. I said, relax, bro. Some of us are single. <laughs> that made everybody laugh, and he made a joke. Here's Mountain Dew and order 80. Thank you very much. He said people were just talking and chatting, waiting for the food orders. Kaylee and Madison were hanging around the truck window, hounding people who were picking up their orders. He said it was then that a dark four-door sedan showed up. A guy got out and yelled, hurry up. Vidot said, I saw them get into the car and it looked like they just ditched him. I said, bro, they're leaving you. And he said, what the F? And I said, sorry, brother. So definitely the beard guy talking to the white hoodie guy that we saw on the video. And it had seemed like he had come with them. It seemed like the girls were just completely ignoring him. And then they just dipped out on this guy. And so it says here, the, the grub bus cashier had mercy on the two women and handed them food. And they took it and ran to the car. I said to the guy, did you just give those girls food without them paying? He was like, yeah, they had to go home. The day after the news of the murder broke, Vidat realized he had some information that police could use in the investigation, so he reached out to the authorities. The only thing that I was able to do is verify the timeline and tell police that they got into a car. He said the driver of the car has also been eliminated as a suspect by police. Vidat said that this case really hit home with him. I was there. I have a little girl. And at the end of the day, a dad's going to go through Thanksgiving without his daughter. And that really hurts. I actually saw something interesting and I'll share that with you guys right now in this video. Matthew made this post on Facebook and said, I'm a retired detective and I currently study criminology pursuing my PhD. I honestly do not think they police have any real leads. That's kind of my opinion as well, which is troubling. On one hand, but it also does help narrow the focus to an extent. Since the FBI profilers are currently assisting, it means they probably don't have a suspect and they need help developing what to look for. Here's my take on the offender's profile based on what has been confirmed by police in the most recent press conference. I'll be honest, this case is baffling to me. It's eerily similar to the 1978 Chi Omega murders by Ted Bundy. They had no real leads at first either, I'm open to any constructive criticism as well. White male under 25 years old, nerdy and socially awkward, fantasy type, skinny, but decent physical shape. Not so awkward that he can't blend in with the college crowd as he's walking around town. I'm guessing he's an avid video gamer who loves the first person fantasy killing games. For him, this crime was all about the knife kills and the ability to use stealth to get in and out. This might explain why there was no sexual component to the crime. I'm guessing he's a local or someone that has strong ties to the community. He also knew the victims vaguely, but not on a friend basis, more like a DoorDash driver or an Uber driver who knew where they lived. I'm also guessing the knife was an expensive purchase, something tactical or fancy that he spent time playing with and cleaning before and after the crime. Not a Walmart special, something the killer prizes and covets as his weapon of choice. I don't think they will match his DNA to any previous offenders or crimes because he is young and not in the system yet. I don't think he's a sexually motivated criminal either, but he definitely gets off on the killing. He also probably has a reputation for carrying a knife and probably has a juvenile record or report on file, which will foreshadow all of the above when he's identified. Thanks for watching this video. Please hit like, subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, comment below, liminary thoughts, just a little smidget of a piece of information. 